This is economics, in case you forgot what class you were in. Uh, this is the first video of week five. So hopefully from week four packets, you've turned in the chapter nine test, as well as the one homework assignment from chapter 10. Plan is that we'll be finishing up the chapter 10 notes today. Therefore, the next two days will be geared towards getting homework quiz, reviewing, and taking the chapter 10 test. And then there will be two more videos that will be assigned for the end of the week. So let's get back into this. We're talking about the different financial institutions that make up the financial market. Uh, letter A was commercial banks. They're the largest, the most important part of the financial markets and now we're at other financial markets so let's talk about them number one we have is thrifts there are three kinds of thrift institutions uh, legislation in the late 1970s and early 1980s have increased the allowable activities of thrifts thereby blurring the distinction between them and commercial banks so what's the purpose of thrifts? To encourage personal savings and to provide loans to meet personal needs. Okay, sounds similar to a bank. Yeah. How do they do this? They collect savings and use these resources to make loans. They collect savings and then they use these resources to make loans. Again, very similar to commercial banks. If you want to go into greater details into uh, identifying what the difference are between thrifts and commercial banks, I highly recommend um, taking a college course. But let's talk about the different types of thrifts. A letter A, the first type of thrift is savings and loan associations. In short, sometimes they're called SNLs. Uh, something worth noting about SNLs is traditionally they had been the leading financiers of home mortgages. In 1989, a law was or an institution was created called the Office of Thrift Supervision, otherwise shortened OTS. Worth noting, it was created by the government to deal with the SNL crisis in the 1980s. Uh, the OTSs are the primary regulator of all federally chartered and many state chartered thrift institutions. Sorry, the OTS, the Office of Thrift Supervision, is the primary regulator of all federally chartered and many state chartered thrift institutions. Letter B, another form of thrift are mutual savings banks. Uh, worth noting, they resemble savings and loans except for some technicalities concerning their organization. They exist almost exclusively in the northeastern U.S. That's what you need to know about mutual savings banks. And then, letter C, a third type of thrift are credit unions originated with groups of people who have a common interest, such as uh, company employees, teachers, or union members. The thing you need to know about credit unions is that this group forms cooperative institutions to pool the savings of their members and make consumer loans available to them. It's kind of like having a bank, but it being a club. And only members can participate in the bank, and only members can get loans from the bank based upon the amount of money placed in by the fellow loaners. So three thrifts, savings and loan associations, mutual savings banks, and credit unions. Number two, contractual savings institutions. Another financial institution are contractual savings. As their name implies, contractual savings institutions operate under a contract 
between the consumer and the institution, where the business receives regular payments from its customers, invests that money, and returns to the customers stipulated amounts of money under prescribed conditions. Uh, examples of contractual savings institutions would be insurance companies and pension funds. You put money in, you can take money out. That's the idea. Insurance companies and pension funds. Number three, finance companies. They make consumer loans for purposes such as home improvements, automobile purchases, or to small businesses. Worth noting about finance companies, they charge higher interest rates due to higher risks than commercial banks or thrifts. So a finance company, uh, perhaps maybe you get involved in, in the bank refuses you, a thrift refuses you, maybe a finance company could help you out. But be warned, the interest rates will be higher. Number four, investment companies. This is where the company pools the financial resources of their shareholders to buy stocks, bonds, real estate, and other investments that they believe will return profits. A good example of an investment company are mutual funds. Mutual funds we've talked about in the past. Uh, they help you to invest, quote-unquote, in the stock market by having uh, stocks in many different companies. That's why uh, if the stock market goes well, your investment goes well as well. If the stock market goes poorly, yours will go down as well, but it won't be as significant as risking it all on one bank or one stock. Money. Before reading this chapter, you thought you knew what it was and what it did. It was the paper currency you carried in your wallet and used to buy stuff. Now, however, you understand that there is much more to money than just dollar bills and making purchases. You understand the differences between commodity, representative, and fiat money. No doubt you are glad that the United States has a monetary economy rather than one based on barter. You are probably also glad that your fiat money is portable, divisible, durable, and stable, and that it provides you a reasonably good measure of the value of items while retaining its purchasing power. The terms M1 and M2 take your understanding of the money supply beyond your own personal finances, and you have been introduced to one way the banking system creates money. You already knew from your parents that it did not grow on trees. As regards your personal finances, you should also have a better understanding of the bank in which you may have a savings, a checking, and perhaps even some type of investment account. Whether your bank is state or federally chartered and what it means by describing itself as full service are also concepts that this chapter should help you to appreciate better. Yet, with all that you have learned from this chapter about money and banking, make sure you take with you the truth that ultimately whatever money you possess, you have as a gift from God. Use it as you are to use all of God's gifts wisely and well for his glory. That, my students, is the end of the notes for your homework. Pages 117 to 119 uh, in your activities book, that's a chapter review. Uh, there is a matching section. There is a multiple choice section. And then there is a completion and short answers section. Please note that there are two questions on page 119. So please don't forget to answer those last two questions. It will affect your grade if you don't. So page 117 to 119 in the activities book. Also the chapter 10 define quiz. You will find that in your packet. Uh, before you watch the next video, please make sure that you've prepared and taken the Chapter 10 test. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. Be good, do good. Bye.